this late later phase of the cure kind of late ages phase of the cure really a bit of a clunky start with the top <laughs> by this point uh, Simon Gallup wasn't in the band he wasn't in the band during their, those singles that, that made up Japanese whispers uh, and he um, wasn't in the band at this time um, weirdly on, on the top in 1984 which is a bit of a clunky start to this phase of the cure as I said but uh, it's Robert Smith is handling a lot of <laughs> instruments. He's on guitar and on bass and vocals and, you know, um, you've got Lol Toller, that's no longer the drummer, now the keyboardist, and a new drummer called Andy Anderson on drums. Um, and um, it's a bit of a mixed affair at the top. It's not a hugely good Cure album, really. Um, it has its moments. The Caterpillar, which is a single, is of course amazing. Piggy in the Mirror is amazing. Um, and, you know, you've got a few decent tracks here and there, like Shake Dog Shake and, you know, Dressing Up and whatever, but it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of a clunky, messy album overall, to be honest. Um, but then we got The Head on the Door in 1985. A little bit of a lineup change. Again, we now have, uh, we've still got Lol Tollers on keyboards, we've still got Robert Smith, obviously, on vocals and guitar. Uh, we, we've now got Paul Thompson coming in on, gu on gu guitars as well, providing a second guitarist. Uh, we've got Simon Gallup on bass, and we've got uh, Boris Williams on drums. Uh, and uh, this is, I think, sort of almost like a classic. Uh, you know, the the early lineup of of, of Lowell Tollers and Simon Gallup and Robert Smith, when Lowell Tollers was on drums, um, is one of the classic Cure out lineups. This feels like this is the other classic Cure lineup. You know, where you've got Robert Smith and you've got Lowell Tollers now on keyboard, and you've got Simon Gallup and you've got the uh, Paul Thompson and Boris Williams. So this is another uh, classic. Uh, this is the other classic Cure lineup now. Um, the head on the door. Uh, is great. I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, <laughs> there are uh, the odd track here or there which we think maybe not quite up to the same quality as the bigger tracks, but there, there's some really wonderful tracks on here. In Between Days, which is a single, is brilliant, quirky kind of pop thing. Um, the Blood, with its like Spanish guitar kind of thing uh, going on, is it's really kind of a good track, I think. Uh, you got Push, Push, sounds amazing. Go, go, go! It's really fun and enjoyable cure track with a lot of passion to it as well. Um, you've got the other single, Close to Me. I prefer the single version when you've got like the brass and stuff in there. But yeah, but yeah, but it's a great song, so it stands up whatever version you hear of it. Um, uh, a Night Like This is another amazing Cure track song. So at its best moments, Head on the Door is amazing, and that is always definitely worth getting um, for those high moments. But there are, number, there are a few tracks on here that I kind of think, eh, yeah, okay, but whatever. <laughs> uh, then we had Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me in 1987. But yeah, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. It's uh, The most famous track on here is probably Why Can't I Be You. Uh, lovely, jazzy, upbeat number. Um, which has for many years been an anthem for me wanting to be a woman because I'm trans and before I realised I was trans I still had a lot of that kind of like feeling in me <laughs> and uh, it's long been my anthem for that because it's like you know you're so gorgeous blah, 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 why can't I be you um, I kind of have related to that quite a lot at certain points in my life especially before I even realised I was trans probably um, and um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've never actually heard the full album of Kiss, 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 Kiss. I may have listened to it on Spotify or something. Um, I've never owned the album and I'm not that familiar with most of it, apart from Why Can't I Be You and Catch, which is the other song I, I know off that album. Oh, and, and Just Like Heaven. Yeah, there's like three songs on this album I know really well. And and Just Like Heaven is beautiful. It's like, like it's just it's just like perfection. And it's often held up as a really good, a really, you know, one of the best Cure songs by Cure fans, um, and it's, it is it is perfection, to be honest, it's a beautiful song. But Cat, Catch is a very short, kind of sweet song, which is also very beautiful. This is the thing, the Cure have a real romantic side. They have a real melancholy kind of side, but then they have this real kind of romantic side. Uh, yeah, I think it's time I've talked about the Cure style, especially during this period where the Cure were the most the Cure. Um, <laughs> there's, um, there's so many different sides to this band. They do do the goth rocky kind of melancholy thing, and certainly in their early days they were kind of gothic. Um, but even in the later days, there's certainly a lot of melancholy moments, which is great. First, you want to release 
those feelings of sadness and depression, um, which you know is useful if you suffer from them. Um, the, the, but they do. But then they do this poppy kind of quirky kind of pop kind of tune, and do a really good job at it because it's very tuneful and very upbeat and kind of poppy. But at the same time, it's the cure. So there's this alternative kind of you know quirky hitness to it, which just makes it even more special. Um, and yeah, they can be, as well as being melancholy or whatever, they can also be really lush and romantic. There's some really beautiful cure songs, expressing feelings of love and, uh, you know, just with that hint of melancholy, because it is the cure, but just so lush and beautiful in the way that they're written and the way they're arranged. This is why, you know, to be honest, Cure fans love The Cure for a reason, and they just really do connect so well with a lot of people's emotions, and this is, I mean, why they're one of my favourite bands. I mean, they're just, I don't know what else to say about it. They just make good music, you know, well, they did during the 80s anyway. Um, and yeah, so I've never, I don't think I've really ever connected with Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me as a whole, but there are three very, very good songs on there. And then in 1989, The Cure released the other contender for the best Cure album ever, uh, Disintegration, which is very melancholy for the most part, but with this still with this lush kind of late ages Cure sound. Um, so it's this lush, melancholy thing throughout, really. I mean, there are a couple of songs that you might think are not quite as melancholy, but they are. If you listen closely to them, they are full of melancholy. Every song on this album is. But you know, love, the single love, so the singles love song and lullaby, maybe even pictures of you. You might think are a bit more if you were just casually listening. <laughs> um, but no, the darkness and the melancholy is in there. It is throughout this album. It is a real heartbreak album. It's a really good album for when you've had your heart broken. Um, it, it, and like, this is the thing. It's not just melancholy. It's lush, beautiful melancholy. The way that only the Cure could do. And it is, there's so many good songs in there. The opening plain song, but you've got, you know, obviously Pictures of You and Love Song. Close Down has, has kind of grown on me in more recent years. I always used to ignore it a little bit when I was a teenager. Um, and you've got Last Dance and uh, Fascination Street is really cool. Prayers for Rain, The Same Deep Waters You, Disintegration, Homesick and Untitled. Seriously, there is most of this album, if not all of this album, is absolutely perfect, beautiful, wonderful music and that's why it's so highly regarded. Um, it's great. Uh, by this point, Lol Tollerst was really sort of not really... He's, he's only credited with other instrument on this album and the keyboards are actually credited to someone else, someone new really. Uh, yeah, Roger O'Donnell is one credited with keyboards on this album. And Lowell Tollhurst is credited on this album, but with other instrument. <laughs> um, he was sort of being pushed out of the band at this time. Um, and indeed left soon afterwards.